I do want to say good morning to you and welcome to a new year, a new year. This is our first um, communion service in a new year and I thank God for allowing us to get through <laughs> all those things that we went through in the previous year and I want to thank God for you being with us even this time, this morning, this afternoon, whenever you are watching this. It's a time for us to commune with the Lord together. And so I am overjoyed that you have stopped by here uh, to celebrate uh, not only the new year, but the opportunity to come and commune with the Lord together. I praise God that he has sustained and kept us, you and me, uh, our family and our houses, uh, and has wiped away some tears over the last year. But here we are and uh, we have an opportunity to celebrate with memory the life of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So this we're here on purpose, on purpose. I want you to pause and think about all that Jesus had brought you through over the last year. I want you to pause and think about how he got us through. And so this is a time of memorial, a time of remembrance, uh, not only for uh, us in and of ourselves, but a time that we should focus our attention on Jesus Christ. Join with me. Will you join with me? As we reflect, I want you to make some serious efforts to go get yourself uh, something that will represent the, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we've had to do in times because we are not... Uh, gathered together virtually, uh, we need to uh, make sure that we have something that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you have one of these uh, wafers or a piece of bread, a cracker, some rich uh, crackers, or a piece of wheat bread or wonder bread or something like that, go get yourself a piece of bread or something that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then while you're there, get something to drink, get some water, some out the, out the faucet, uh, something out of the refrigerator. We ask that it's not fermented, not fermented. And for some of us, we still have some prepared communion. If you have some prepared communion, make sure it hasn't expired and that uh, juice has fermented and got a little bit more tasty than we'd like at this time. So uh, get yourself a piece of bread, a cracker, or something. We're going to commune with the Lord together. Uh, something that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, something that represents the blood that was shed on the cross for your sins and mine. I wanted to, as we're doing this, I want to remind everybody how important this is. How important this is. If God has brought us through some stuff, Jesus Christ has been there uh, championing us. He's been there interceding for us right at the right hand of the Father. Not only do we want to remember the things that he's done on this on this earth, uh, uh, healed the sick, uh, fed the hungry, walked and talked with us. He was a wonderful, don't, you know, he was a wonderful, wonderful example for us to live our lives by. Don't, don't, don't forget that. But not only that, but also that right now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, 
making intercessions for you and for me. And I know over the last year, many of us, many of, and I'm including me, many of us have stumbled in different places, but he's been there, Jesus has been there making intercessions for us. So we want to do this now in a time of remembrance of Jesus Christ. And then before we get started in our time of communion, this time, this beautiful uh, uh, moment of, of, of a celebration of Jesus Christ, I want you to look over your life. And here we are in the New Year's, and we're asking that if you have some unforgiveness, as Paul says, something that is holding you down, something that, that you need to, 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 to put down, some unforgiveness of somebody, do it right now. We want to come and commune with the Lord with a heart as clean and as pure as we possibly can. Remember, the Bible tells us if you want to be forgiven, you must first for give. So look over if you're holding any grudges or anything with anybody else. Put that aside right now. Put that aside right now. So everybody should have with you uh, something that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Something that represents the blood. So here we are now. Let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again uh, for your loving kindness, your ability to get us through even a, a year like last year. And here we are now, the first Sunday, the first time in this year we're coming to commune with you. We lift you up, we praise you, we glorify you for just your sustaining grace and how you've lovingly wrapped your arms around us and kept our hand uh, tightly in your hand. We thank you now for Jesus Christ and all that he has done, he's doing, and he promises that he will do for each and every one of us now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to sanctify these elements in our hands, the bread, the crackers, what it is, sanctify it now, because we're going to use it in a time of consecration, in a time of remembrance of Jesus Christ. In his name we are playing, amen. And that's all we often say. At this time, this bread, this 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 cracker, this uh, this wafer, this represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As often as you do this, as often as you take uh, this time to commune with Him, as often, as many as times as we do this, we do this in remembrance of Him. You may eat. Amen. And this is straight. This liquid, this fluid, this this represents the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross for our sins. And as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Drink. As I've said many times in the past, so wonderful, so beautiful. This represents our time of communion with Jesus Christ. I thank you and I praise God for you. Let's have a closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, again, we say thank you again for this opportunity for us to come and commune with you uh, and your son, Jesus Christ. We lift you up. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, we say thank you. I want you to enjoy the worship service as we hit for it. God bless you. God keep you. And be safe the rest of this year. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul What wondrous love is this, oh my soul What wondrous love is this, that caused the Lord of bliss To bear the dreadful curse of my soul Thank you.
to say welcome to you and thank you for joining the virtual worship service of Restoration Bible Church. Here we are in a new year, a new year, and I am overjoyed that you are with me and that we've stayed with us. I want to thank God for everybody who has continuously been joining us virtually. Uh, we are honored and we are blessed. And we want you to say uh, it's time that we give God some praise that we've made it through another year, not by accident or mistake. And we believe that you are here right now because of God's love and care and kindness. And so as we head forward today, I want you to keep remembering, remembering, remembering all that God has brought us through over the last year. So I want you to get a Bible in your hand and go with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Everybody heard this one, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm reading from the New King James Version of God's Holy Scripture. And it says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new, somebody say new, new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Somebody say new. And so all things have become new new and that is the title i would like to use simply the word new new somebody say new you see the greek word for new is kehinos kehinos and it points to newness and being renewed and refreshed and freshness and this kehinos can also be a fixed or a planted on to the meaning of age in the sense of being fresh being fresh in age a fresh, new, young, renewed mindset. When I wake up in the morning, I find out that I am pretty smart. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not prideful, but I'm pretty smart in the morning because my mind is crisp and clear. And the clutter from yesterday, I have left back there. You see, I'm fresh and I feel new when I wake up. Am I talking to somebody? I get this attitude, that was yesterday. God has given me a new day to look at life with a new attitude, refresh, new. See, the King James Bible uses this word new some 173 times in reference to Things like wine, moon, grain, houses, ropes, uh, garments, songs, and, and harvests, and covenants, and heaven, and even a new heaven and new earth. And even it reflects about new gods and, and, and these little Gs, these new gods. And, but it also talks about a new heart and a new spirit. So new is possible even in our lives. I think it's time as we move into this new year as we catch hold of new hearts and new spirits. There are some things we need to leave in last year. Am I talking to somebody? Have you ever thought about a life with a new heart and a new spirit? And I need to say that some of us need that, a new heart and a new spirit. A lot of us, we've been grumpy always and always angry and nothing seems to go right. Life has just been a burden on us and just, you know, so, but we have to make up our minds, our minds to leave that spirit in last year, as I was saying, leave that spirit in last year. We have to get this attitude that this is a new me. This is a new me. I've stopped letting my old life and the old world mindset steal my joy. Think about this. I believe it is in Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verse 9 through 10. It tells us to put off the old man and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created us. See here in this book of 2 Corinthians, Paul, the apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth a second time. And then this section, uh, this, this section of 2 Corinthians of this letter, Paul is reminding the church about the high importance to be reconciled to God, be reconciled to God. He's saying, get back in line with those things God would require of us. I found out it's easy to fall away with so many old gods, the little g, old gods appearing and reappearing to entice happenings all around us. We've seen that over the last year, over the last two years, over the last few years, old gods enticing us to go back to, to crazy stuff. So we need a new heart and a new mind this year to move past and further than last year. See, I decided, I, I hope somebody's with me. I don't want to be stuck in last year. 
I discovered a new car will take you to the same old places unless you change our GPS navigation destination. We gotta, gotta make a decision. We don't wanna go to them old places. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Let's walk with me real quick. It says that if anyone, that means you, me, black, white, you can pick a color. I don't care what color, brown, uh, yellow, what color. If anyone, that also implies sinners, unsaved folks, and even saved backsliders. It implies all of us. You see, what is this pattern? If anyone, they're saying we all still have a chance if you're hearing this, we all still have a chance. It says, but if anyone be in Christ, in Christ, that means to think like Christ, talk like Christ, act like Christ, have that attitude of what would Jesus do in every situation in our lives. I need to ask somebody this question. Did you act like that last year? Did you act like Christ last year? This year with a new heart and a new spirit, Think before we speak. Talk like Jesus before we act. If anyone be in Christ, it says here that they're a new creation, new creature. How do we see ourselves in relationship to God in this world? You may not look the same on the outside, but God is looking at our hearts, which is on the inside. You see, I don't want to lose 100 pounds last year on the outside, but still carry the yesterday weight of being angry and hurt and revenge all on the inside, no matter how I, well I might look on the outside. Have we forgot Christ has made us new? He has made us new. And somebody say this, I'm a new creation. I'm a new, cre I'm a new creation. I am a new creation. Not only are believers change from within, but the whole new order of creative energy began with Christ. This is this time now, this is a new covenant. We have to have this new covenant idea, a new perspective, a new body, and even a new church, even a new church. And we see that now, a new church. Through Christ, all of creation is being renewed. An important aspect of this completely new creation is how people are reconciled to their creator and how we are reconciled even to each other. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation, new creation. All things, it says here, all things have passed away. Let me, let me stop for a moment. The old worn out ways are being replaced with new. It's, can't we see that? The old worn out ways are being replaced with new. I was laughing the other day. I cleaned out my closet and I got rid of some stuff that don't fit no more. Some shoes, some suits, some coats, some jackets. Don't fit no more. You see, this newness in Christ is not a superficial change that will be quickly superseded by another, another novelty that pops up. This is an entirely new order of all creation under Christ's authority. Get rid of the old, the old order of sin, the old order of death and the sinful human nature, all gone, all gone. Being new requires a new way of looking at all people and all creation. I need to ask this question. Does our life reflect this new perspective? Will this year our life reflect this new perspective? No more hate, no more division, no more judgment, no re more rejection, no more unkindness, untruthfulness, unforgiveness, unfruitfulness, unhappy, unsatisfied, or no more of these worldly lifestyles. These kinds of things should have passed away once we got saved. Our church scriptures says, uh, Romans 12 and 2, that's Restoration Bible Church's church scripture. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the, the renewing of your mind to prove that acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to say this to somebody. Let's go into a new year with a new transformed mind. New transformed mind. Will you join me with a new transformed mind? mine.
But this passage, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, says that all things have become new. Christians are brand new. Christians are brand new. The Holy Spirit gives us new life, and we are not the same anymore. When we give our lives to Christ, we are reformed. We, we, let me put this. We are not reformed. We're not rehabilitated. We're not re-educated. We are recreated. We are recreated, living in vital union with Christ. Believers, help me with this, somebody. Believers are not merely turning over a new leaf. We are beginning a new life under a new master, a new master. God has some new stuff in store for us. We got to go for it this year. Get some new stuff in our lives. We got to go for it this year. I was thinking about this. This is free. I'm, I'm a, as my pastor, Reverend Dr. Robert Manaway, Tabernacle Mission Baptist Church said, this is free. When I get dirty, I take a shower and a bath. I thought about this. I, I put on, clean up with some Dove or some Irish Spring. I use some stuff I got for Christmas or something, some bed, bath, body work, some of that stuff. I, I remember we used to use Tide in the bathtub when we were kids. But after we take a bath or a shower, I don't put back on old, dirty clothes. I put on clean, fresh clothes. When, when, when I was a kid, when we were kids, like my sister, sister Phyllis would confirm, or Alvin and Roger would confirm, we used to try to trick our mom and dad. we just act like we took a bath or a shower, and we put on some fresh clothes and some cologne. But I found out fresh clothes and cologne can't cover a messed up or smelly body. Got the attitude when I was when a child, I used to think of a child, act a child, but I put away childly things. I became new in my thinking when I got grown old because when I got old, my thinking and my attitudes changed. A new year and a new life. Jesus is incorporating this into an entirely new order. This new creation that Christ has begun constructing through his work on the cross includes the community of faith, you and I, our church, and all creation. I like what Ezekiel 11, and I believe it is, Ezekiel 11, 19 says, then I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within them. Take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Then I will be their God. I'm going to my seat. There's three areas of new attitudes for this year. I want you to consider the first one. New, 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 new. And now. First thing in this new attitude, it got to be, we got to stop procrastinating. Make now, now. Not tomorrow, but make now, now. Do those things that God has gifted and blessed us to do and do them now. Stop procrastinating. How many things have you left unfinished in our lives over the last year? Do them now. You see, procrastination is a destroyer of blessings. It can rob us of our self-confidence, our reliability, and personal peace. Procrastination. Do them now. Has it been, I need to ask, has it just been plain laziness? In Proverbs, the 18th chapter, and verse 3 the Bible says, he who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. That's the devil. Now is the time to get busy. Now, somebody say now. Use your time, talent, and treasure for the kingdom of God now. Forgive somebody now. Show love to someone now. Give more of you to someone who needs you now, a new attitude now, new relationships in my life now. Yeah, I found out some some old relationships could be holding us down, could be holding us down. I realize I don't do some things that I did last year. I can't do them. I found out I just don't do them in a new year. I'm going to live in a new year now. Somebody say now. In now. Second thing I want to say to you is energize. Energize my life. Energize our lives. You see, we started this idea of energize a few years ago at Restoration Bible Church, but it fizzled out. 
But this year, let's put some new power, some new force and thrust into our godly behaviors. And this is, and being it, this is new. This is a new, this is a new me attitude. You see, I discovered the church can't become energized unless the people are energized. Energized. That word was on the walls of our church and the bathrooms and everywhere. But in the hearts and the spirit of the people, that's where it needs to reside. So I come today to help energize you, to energize you. In the book of Acts, first chapter, verse eight, Jesus says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem in all Judea, Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You see, energize yourselves and become a witnesses of Christ. Let your light shine that men might see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Let the power of the Holy Spirit lead you. Start that business this year. Energize yourself. Get your life in order. Energize yourself. Get out of debt. Energize yourself. Throw off some weight. Throw off some people. Energize yourself. Get more active in ministry. Live an energized life. And have an energized way of looking even at yourself. Energize. Somebody say energize. I was thinking about, I always say I'm getting old. But I realized with an energized life, I can still be used by God. We have to start thinking positive thoughts and positive action. And expect positive, powerful results in our life. Speak good and not evil in our life. Energize. Somebody say energize. Now, energize. And then the W, worship. In this new year, let God be God in your life. Get closer to God to hear him better. It says in James, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Have a new relationship with God this year. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Spend more time worshiping God. Pray more. Read his word more. Tell other people about Jesus more. More. Let's worship God this year. This year I'm going to walk in the newness of life because I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm going to wake up each morning excited to see the new things God has in store for me. I want to be energized with my worship of God and do more and more things in my time of worship, more and more things for him. I was laughing, thinking as I got ready this morning, how my daughter said it's time for me to get rid of some old clothes and old things. And she said, let me give you a new look, dad. And my daughter, Georgine, is a, is a stylist. And so she said, put on a new look, new clothes, new clothes. And you know, when I put on so these new th articles are on my body, I started to have a new attitude. I started getting excited about how God is making me look, how he's using even my daughter to make me look better, to become energized. Not yesterday's energized, but today's energized, right now. So I come to somebody to say to you as I, as I finish, now worship God. Now let's get energized and worship God. After all we've been through, God is saying right now, get energized in your worship of him. May God bless you and God keep you. This new year, I want you to do something and, and I'm through. I want you to make sure that your relationship with Jesus Christ is a new, powerful, energized relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to get closer and closer to him, as I've said. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Make up your mind, make up your mind that you're going to tell somebody about the man Jesus Christ because there are people that need to have energized life in them right now. They need to have a new relationship with a God that came and died on the cross for them, was buried and rose on the third day morning, and he's alive in heaven right now. And so I want you to do that now, energized worship. God bless you and God keep you.